to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now today I'm taking you back to the reign of King Henry VIII for On This Day in Tudor History, the 3rd of November 1534, Parliament passed the first Act of Supremacy. What did this mean? Well, this Act confirmed the status of King Henry VIII and his successors as the supreme head of the church in England and made it treasonable to support the authority of the Pope in England. Here is the wording of the Act from the Statutes of the Realm. Albeit the King's Majesty justly and rightfully is and oweth to be the supreme head of the Church of England and so is recognised by the clergy of this realm in their convocations. Yet, nevertheless, for corroboration and confirmation thereof, and for increase of virtue in Christ's religion within this realm of England, and to repress and extirp all errors, heresies, and other enormities and abuses heretofore used in the same, be it enacted by the authority of this present Parliament that the King, our Sovereign Lord, his heirs and successors, kings of this realm, shall be taken, accepted and reputed the only supreme head in earth of the Church of England called Anglicana Ecclesia and shall have and enjoy annexed and united to the imperial crown of this realm as well the title and style thereof as all honours, dignities, preeminences, jurisdictions, privileges, authorities, immunities, profits and commodities to the said dignity of the supreme head of the same church belonging and appertaining. And that our said sovereign lord, his heirs and successors, kings of this realm, shall have full power and authority from time to time to visit, repress, redress, reform, order, correct, restrain and amend all such errors, heresies, abuses, offences, contempts and enormities, whatsoever they be, which by any manner spiritual authority or jurisdiction ought or may lawfully be reformed, repressed, ordered, redressed, corrected, restrained or amended, most to the pleasure of Almighty God, the increase of virtue in Christ's religion and for the conservation of the peace, unity and tranquillity of this realm. Any usage, custom, foreign laws, foreign authority, prescription or any other thing or things to the contrary hereof notwithstanding. Phew. Notice from the wording there that Parliament wasn't making the King supreme head. It was recognising that the King was justly and rightfully supreme head. So it was stating that it was an established fact. This Act of Parliament paved the way for the English Reformation and the subsequent dissolution of the monasteries. The King was now the highest authority in the land under God, and support for the papacy or the authority of the Pope was deemed treason. On the 15th of January 1535, in front of his privy chamber, Henry VIII proclaimed that he was now supreme head of the Church of England, and the act came into force in February 1535. Any person taking public or church office in England was required as part of the legislation to swear the oath of supremacy, thus recognising Henry VIII as the supreme head. The text of the oath read, I, then your name, do utterly testify and declare in my conscience that the King's Highness is the only supreme governor of the realm and all other His Highness dominions and countries, as well in all spiritual or ecclesiastical things or causes as temporal and that no foreign prince, person, prelate, state or potentate hath or ought to have any jurisdiction, power, superiorities, preeminence or authority, ecclesiastical or spiritual within this realm. And therefore I do utterly renounce and forsake all jurisdictions, powers, superiorities or authorities and do promise that from henceforth I shall bear faith and true allegiance to the King's Highness, his heirs and lawful successors, and to my power shall assist and defend all jurisdictions, privileges, preeminences and authorities granted or belonging to the King's Highness, his heirs and successors, all united and annexed to the imperial crown of the realm. So help me God and by the contents of this book. 
The Treason Act of 1534 made it treason to disavow the Act of Supremacy, the punishment being death. Famous examples of those who refused to recognise the king's supremacy and sign the oath include the Carthusian monks of London Charterhouse and the king's former Lord Chancellor, Sir Thomas More. Now, a bit of trivia here. It was George Boleyn, Anne Boleyn's brother, who'd been sent to convocation in 1531 to put forward the arguments for the king's supremacy. Although convocation balked at the idea initially, they recognised the king as the supreme head as far as the law of Christ allows. Then the Reformation Parliament, as it's known, cemented this in 1534. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about how a cardinal's answers to a king's questions led to the executions of his friends and family. Do make sure that you're subscribed by clicking just right about there and then you hit the bell so that you don't miss that video. I didn't actually time that, that just happened to do that. And I had definitely haven't got Tim ringing a bell in the background. One lady thought that I'd get Tim to actually physically ring a bell. No, church bell. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 3rd of November, 1592, in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, Privy Councillor and former Lord Deputy of Ireland, Sir John Perrow, or Perrot, died at the Tower of London. Perrot is a fascinating Tudor man who survived being a Protestant and protecting heretics in Mary I's reign, and who was saved six times from serious punishment by Queen Elizabeth I's intercession. Some people believe that this favour and a few other factors point to him being King Henry VIII's illegitimate son. You can find out more about him and the arguments for and against him being Henry VIII's son in last year's video. You'll find a link to that in the description. So do subscribe, do hit the bell to be notified and do give me a like if you've enjoyed this video and you can leave a comment too. I'll be back tomorrow. See you then. Bye bye. Albeit the King's Majesty justly. Yeah? Yeah, that's what it said. Belonging and appertaining. Can I breathe? <laughs>